Welcome good people, my name is Joel Collier and today we're going to talk about how to test moderation with unobserved variables. So one of the things when you're talking about testing uh, moderation is this idea of forming interaction terms um, to test if the moderator is strengthening or weakening your relationship. So to give an example here, I've got a simple model here where uh, this came from a restaurant setting that adaptive behavior uh, did the employee in the restaurant adapt their behavior to you and did that lead to customer delight and then subsequently did that delight lead to kind of positive word of mouth and we had a hypothesis that uh, friendliness of the server would strengthen the relationship from adaptive behavior to customer delight so you could have adaptive behavior but if the server wasn't really friendly doing the adaption it really is going to weaken that customer delight um, uh, outcome. But if they were uh, very friendly, it would actually strengthen the relationship from adaptive behavior to delight. And so typically what you do uh, in these kind of situations is when you're testing it, is you'll have uh, the uh, IV, in this case adaptive behavior, having a direct relationship to uh, its, its outcome variable, customer delight. And then you would have a direct effect from the moderator, which in this case was friendliness to delight. And then you would also create an interaction term, which is basically uh, an output or a product of friendliness times adaptive behavior to really test if the relationship was strengthening or weakening it. And so that interaction is actually going to test the, um, the moderator itself. And in, in for the majority of it, what you'll see happening in moderation testing is where they form kind of composite variables. So they'll take this unobservable variable, like for instance adaptive behavior, and maybe it was measured by five questions. So adapt one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, and this unobservable variable, they will basically kind of convert to what's called a composite uh, variable. and um, and sometimes they do this by taking an average of all of the five, sometimes it's a summation. Um, but what they're doing is just taking a composite of it. So they've taken all five of these items and kind of crushed it down into one. And they use these kind of composite variables so that when they form that interaction term now, it's just uh, this composite variable, like for instance of adapt, times the composite variable of friendliness. The issue that runs into is, is what if I don't want to test it as a composite variable? What if I want to test my model in the full structural model with the unobservable variables and the error terms off of the measurement items too? Well, how do I do that? So we're going to focus on, you know, how to kind of uh, to test that uh, today. So if we look at this in uh, Amos, just as the uh, simple moderation model here. We've got uh, our composite variable of adapt, uh, our composite variable of our moderator, which is friendliness, and then we've created kind of an interaction term here, which was the adapt times that friendliness uh, construct, uh, leading to composite uh, variable of delight and kind of word of mouth. And if we run this analysis, uh, what it gives us is the, again, so you can see the direct effect of adaptive delight, which was significant with a t-value of 8.18. And we can see our moderator right here, our interaction term, uh, with a 0.026, but it's got a 2.143 t-value, so it was positive and significant. So that means that the moderator in this instance of friendliness has a strengthening relationship from adapt to delight because it was significant. So the more friendly the server was, the stronger adapt to delight actually was. Again, this just gives us a context for what it's like in um, kind of a composite variable. Well, how do I do it again if it's unobservable? So let's take a look at this in uh, Amos here and see how we would try to uh, test the moderator if it was unobservable. So right now you can see I've got adaptive behavior and it's got its unobservable. It's unobservable with its um, five kind of 
measurement items going to an unobservable customer delight and an unobservable word of mouth. You can also see I've got friendliness as an unobservable construct and it's measured by three items and has a direct relationship to customer delight too. But now we have to form the interaction term. But we have to form the interaction term with these measurement items. Well, how do we do that? Well, one way that you can do that is what's called through the full indicator interaction term. And what that is, is it takes uh, friendly one, which is your first moderator uh, item, and it multiplies it times each one of your measurements for your IV. So that would be friendly one times adapt one times adapt two times adapt three, four and five. And they do the same thing again with friendly two. You multiply that times all the measurement items of the IV, and you do it with friendly three. And you can see I've, I've kind of done the legwork for us here and kind of show you what it looks like here with this full indicator interaction term. Now this is very labor intensive to do this. Um, and you can see why some people are like, oh my goodness, this is just a lot of work to test it this way. Um, and the thing too that you'll see uh, through this is you notice that we've formed these new kind of measurement items, if you want to call them measurement items, for this unobservable interaction term. But we've reused uh, the, the measurement items kind of over and over. You can see there's like a friendly one here and a friendly one here and here and here and here. There's numerous places. So we're reusing kind of the same constructs and kind of over and over again to form this kind of unobservable interaction terms, you know, items. And eventually that's going to cause some problems and we're going to talk about it uh, in just a minute on where these problems got to come from when you have this kind of full indicator and, and what we can do about it. But initially I've basically got my model here in Amos kind of set up like normal with the structural paths and I formed this kind of unobservable interaction term by forming kind of product terms from all the measurement items of the moderator and the IV. And if we run this analysis, uh, we'll see what it gives us here is in the estimates that our interaction term is a 0.033 uh, and our significance was uh, a 2.71. Um, the moderator directly to customer delight was significant and so was our IV to the DV of adaptive behavior to customer delight. Well, what this tells us now is that friendliness itself has a strengthening relationship uh, from a, when, a, when adaptive behavior goes to customer delight, friendliness has a strengthening relationship. So uh, when the servers adapted their behavior uh, and they were friendly, it strengthened the relationship to customer delight. When they were not friendly, it weakened the relationship to customer delight. So initially, everything looks fine running it this way, except there is a problem, though. So the issue that we're going to run into is model fit. So you can see here our model fit in this full indicator interaction is horrible. right? The chi-square divided by degrees of freedom was 15. Our CFI was 0.81. These are all in the 0.8s. That one's actually 0.7. Our root mean square. Uh, is uh, 0.17, so really kind of horrible kind of model fit. And this is pretty typical of a full indicator interaction. And the reason why model fit kind of blows up is, again, we keep using the same measurement items over and over to create kind of this unobserved interaction. It basically uh, really goes into the aspect of saying there's so much unexplained variance. Uh, by doing that it kind of compounds everything so then you're talking about well well how do I what do I do then because like obviously this is problematic and so another way that you can do this is what's called through the matched pairs method and what the matched pairs method does is it says uh, I'm not going to use uh, an interaction or unobserved interaction where I'm using uh, the same measurement items over and over again. Uh, so what it does is it says, all right, so I'm going to look at friendly one in the results and I'm going to see, you know, from its interaction with all the possible adapts over here, 
which one had the strongest loading and then I'm going to only include that one friendly one with that particular adapt and that's it so let me go back and to the results and I'll give you a little bit more context here so with the output and we look into and specifically kind of the standardized regression weights it's going to give us a better understanding so I'm looking for like what if I look at the full interaction uh, with the indicators like friendly one uh, to adapt five was 0.914 friendly one to adapt four was 0.96 friendly one to three point nine six friendly one to adapt point nine seven and then friendly one with adapt one was 0.98 so that one has the strongest effect you know the strongest loading so I'm going to use only friendly one and adapt one uh, as kind of one of its indicators so let me show you this in context of what it would look like with a matched pair in Amos so in Amos uh, with the matched pairs what I've done is I looked for uh, the best loading interaction between friendly and all the adapts and friendly two with all the adapts and friendly three with all the adapts um, and what actually came out was friend one times adapt one was the strongest the strongest friend two interaction was to adapt to and then friend three was adapt four so I know you're probably the next question is is like wait you didn't use adapt five or adapt three in this kind of new unobserved interaction and you're correct I did not that is one of weak the weaknesses with this kind of method of matched pairs is it does not use every measurement indicator in forming the interaction because when you're talking about a matched pair of the moderator and the IV it basically only matches to the number of measurement items that you know that has the least number so in this instance we would only match three with friendliness because it has the lowest number of measurement items if it was friendliness had five and adapt had five then we would have five interaction um, uh, terms down here that we would have matched and so now we don't have you know this ridiculous number of interaction terms that we had to create uh, now we've only really got a matched pair where we took kind of the best uh, loadings of the interactions from that moderator to the IV again if you had the same number with each one it would be five but in this instance one has three the other one has five so our matched pairs are only going to be to the total number of your least number of measurement items depending on if it's moderator or the IV in this instance it's three so we're only going to have three interaction terms um, to that unobservable variable so the downside is is you still have to kind of create all of these terms to actually see like well, which one loads the best so I'm still creating kind of this full indicator interaction uh, but then what I do is I take kind of the best of those from the loading wise and um, then test my model with this kind of matched pair interaction so let's kind of look at the results we get with this so when we do that and we go into the estimates we can see our interaction term to delight uh, slightly different but not much still pretty consistent on what it is we still see that it's t values a uh, uh, 2 over 2 uh, and that it's positive and so we're still getting the same results that you know when uh, there's friendliness is present you know in that situation that it strengthens the relationship from adaptive behavior to delight but now let's address you know why we're doing this which was model fit which kind of blew up on us before so now let's look at our model fit oh our model fit is really good now look we can see our chi-squared degrees of freedom is 1.5 our CFI is 0.99s, you know, really good, you know, especially when you're talking about a degrees of freedom of 112, and our root mean square error of approximation is below 0.05. So we've now kind of solved the issue of having this kind of problematic model fit. And if you're looking for more information on matched pairs specifically, um, I'm going to put the link. Um, 
really the information you know down below for you to find that through Marsh at all. Uh, it talks you know our journal article that talks about match pairs and why it's kind of appropriate to do that. So from that perspective, um, you know this kind of gives you an idea of how to test. Uh, moderation with an unobserved variable and specifically how to kind of handle the interaction term with a with an unobserved variable and to do it through kind of this matched pairs method um, and, and if you're looking for more information about moderation on how to test it how to probe interactions uh, how to do multiple kinds of just moderation testing like mediation a moderated mediation and other types of uh, that then I encourage you to check out my book um, it's really more a kind of a step-by-step -step for researchers instead of kind of getting lost in the minutiae of the theory it's more kind of practical application uh, and as always if you saw value in the uh, the video I'd ask that you would uh, like and subscribe because it does kind of help out the channel uh, for uh, for me and uh, that's all I got for this week. I hope y'all have a great week. Good people.